Before we get started, if you are new to the channel, don't forget to get subscribed and turn the bell notification on as that is the easiest way to find out when new videos go live right here on this channel. And if you could also do me a huge favor, also drop a like on this video if you're interested in seeing more reviews just like this one. I put up a poll on Twitter the other day asking you guys which game you would like to see reviewed on this channel, and you guys selected one of the newest additions to the Stadia store, and that is Lara Croft and the Temple of Osiris. Now, if you're familiar with the Tomb Raider series, well, the only way this game technically plays the same as literally every Tomb Raider game in the franchise are the platforming elements as well as shooting mechanics, but they are far from what you may be used to and, of course, raiding tombs. And that isn't necessarily a bad thing. This is the follow-up game to one quite similar like it known as Lara Croft and the Guardian of Light, which is the one I'm more familiar with, but when I say more familiar with, I played like 10 minutes of it and never returned to it. Not to say it was bad when I first played it, but it was one of the free games with gold I got on Xbox way back when they began that program, and I had as heavy of a backlog back then as I do nowadays. Right off the bat, I thought it was odd we would get the second game in the series before the first one even showed up, and it's not like it's a brand new game that was begging to be ported over. It's nearly six years old at this point. Needless to say, while it is the second game in this particular series, you don't really need knowledge from the first one to understand or enjoy Temple of Osiris. Depending on how familiar with Egyptian mythology you happen to be, I will be spoiling a story element very, very shortly, so if you want to avoid it, go to the timestamp on screen to skip around it. That will be the only spoilers in this game that I will present to you, and the only elements of this game I'll be discussing is through the main story's completion. Temple of Osiris is an isometric 3D platformer with heavy puzzle elements surrounding it. Your goal is to fetch pieces of Osiris that have been scattered throughout several tombs, which will bring you into the final battle with Osiris' brother and the big bad of the game set. The game's plotline takes extreme influence from the Egyptian myth it is based off of and really doesn't do anything too groundbreaking or memorable. That's not to say there isn't any fun to be had here, but you simply aren't coming to Temple of Osiris for a thrilling story. Especially because you won't be spending much time with this game in the first place, and according to how long to beat, Lara Croft and Temple of Osiris will take you just under 5.5 hours to complete on average, while well, it took me only about 4.5 and, and that was with several pause breaks and thumbing through menus. Granted, my time is calculated through the Stadia official webpage, which starts counting time as soon as the game is open until the game is closed. But while your time in the main story may be limited, here's what you can expect elsewhere. The game is by no means difficult, so if you've had any experience with a platformer or even a twin stick shooter, which this plays very much like from a gunplay standpoint, the biggest challenge the game is going to offer you is in the form of puzzles. And for a Tomb Raider game, I use the word challenge very loosely. I know it sounds like all I'm doing is putting the game down, but the puzzles are quite obvious to figure out, and if they aren't, the game wastes almost no time dropping a tutorial hint right in front of your face with no chance to decline it. The double-sided sword of this scribe, however, is that these hints that were dropped are essentially your introduction to some of the game's mechanics like bombs and grappling hooks. While the puzzles aren't incredibly difficult by any means, it doesn't mean they aren't fun to get through. I plan on playing maybe an hour or two and doing a first impression style for this review, but I honestly didn't want to put it down. I got more than halfway through the game last night split between my phone and the Chromecast Ultra and only stopped when I saw that the clock was reading 3am, so then I went to sleep and then I finished it up today. It was fun and was a quick playthrough and I enjoyed the brevity of it because had it gone for say 3 more hours, at the point the playstyle may have overstayed its welcome. The platforming was fun and the puzzles were fun to figure out, but the game doesn't truly challenge the player to a point where you'll spend over 20 minutes on a tomb. It simply won't, but the game wasn't necessarily designed to be that way. When creating games for the Xbox Live Arcade and the PSN Store became a thing, this series was one of those at the front of the line. It was a familiar IP at an affordable price and a very low investment of time. And due to those three items, this game looks like what a mobile game might look like today. And again, that does sound like a slight on the game, and in some ways it moderately is. The game doesn't blow you away from a visual standpoint, especially when it's essentially a copy and paste of its prequel that was made 10 years ago. But oddly enough, that does offer up one of its greatest strengths. This is a perfect game to play on Stadia in the mobile environment, and it was a blast playing it with my Razer Kishi attached to it and fit that environment very naturally. The game as of this video's release is currently available on a sale at $10, half off its original $20 price point. But here's the benefit that the Stadia version gets that the Steam version, for example, does not get, and that is all the downloadable content included. So it's all the extra outfits, the extra skins, the extra challenge tombs, they are all included as part of your Stadia purchase, as well as the ability to play this game in any manner you would like. In fact, you can't pick up this game sans the DLC, so immediately off, you're getting a better value than you would say over on Steam. Now as I say whether this game is something you should pick up, unless a game is unbelievably good or unbelievably bad, I'm always going to tell you it really depends on certain factors here. 
At $10, I wouldn't even balk at telling you to pick it up because it is a great way to spend four to six hours on the main story and an additional four to six more if you want to 100% the game. Of course, that, that time may depend on your actual skill level, but the game plays great mechanically and doesn't have a steep, difficult curve and gives you the satisfaction of completing this game's hardest puzzles. And if you're someone that loves finding a ton of collectibles and finding the best loot, you'll absolutely get your money's worth with some of the post-game content. At the regular price, however, this is where I'll tell you it really does depend. If you're someone that's okay paying $20 for a game that you can complete in half a work shift, then that's up to you entirely. Your time with the game is short and the story isn't going to blow you away, and the game's difficulty level isn't really all that there. In the Stadia store, you can pick up similarly priced games whether they're available at that price currently or on sale prices like The Division 2 where you can spend countless hours and never be done with the game. It just matters how you like to spend your time gaming. If I were to give the game an actual score, we'll go with a 6 out of 10 here. It doesn't do anything groundbreaking, exciting, or outside of its comfort zone, but it provides a fun, rewarding puzzle system that can be addicting, as well as a hero that you're very familiar rooting for. And of course, the game plays just fine, doesn't have any glaring issues that need to be discussed, and it does also include 4-player online co-op and competitive multiplayer, but in full transparency, I did not have a chance to try out either of those. But there's something else to keep in mind is that local co-op is not in the Stadia version of this game. But enough of what I think, what are your thoughts on Lara Croft and the Temple of Osiris? Did you get a chance to play it, or did this game just not interest you? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. And as I said earlier, if you could do us a favor and like this video, that will really help others find this video just like you did. And as another reminder, we will be going live Friday with the State Initiative's 8th episode at 4 p.m. Central Daylight Time instead of our normal 7 time. Episode 9 should resume back to its normal time, so set your reminders to join us earlier than normal this coming Friday. And lastly, I want to thank you as always for watching and party on. There must be some mechanism to clear a path here. Judging by the heat from below, we've just about restarted the engine.